Here is the simple process I would go through if I was investing a large sum of money today. Whether you're watching this video the day it's published or 10 years from now, this video will help you see how you can use the techniques that I use every day to find great companies and stocks to trade in. And at the very end of this video, I'm going to show you a technique that I use to buy stocks at low, low prices. I think you're going to like that technique. Over the years, I have made millions of dollars by buying assets at a discount. I've bought real estate, stocks, real estate investment trust, which is basically companies that own real estate. I bought their stocks and I bought several of the assets. And one thing that I always try to do when I buy assets, I try to buy them at a discount. So when it comes to investing in the stock market, I have the same philosophy. I want to try and invest or buy stocks or ETFs at a discount from what they typically trade at. Now, the first question you should ask yourself is what stocks or sectors are currently trading at a perceived discount based on what they normally trade at? You could comb through a lot of charts to try and find the stocks or sectors that are trading at a discount. But here is one idea to help you find which companies are trading at a discount. If you simply go to Google, you can do the search that I did here. Search for charts showing how various sectors in the stock market are performing this year. And as you notice here, the first page that came up was barchart.com. So let's check it out. So which sectors are currently out of favor in the market? Because for me, I like to buy things at a discount. So those are the ones I like to focus on. I'm not saying I won't buy in sectors that are doing well because I will, but primarily I like to buy things at somewhat of a discount. As you can see here, this chart is showing you the percentage of large cap stocks that are above their moving averages. Since we want to focus on sectors or stocks that are beaten down, we want to focus on ones that don't have a high percentage above those moving averages. Notice here in the far right column, the column labeled 200 day moving averages, there, there are two boxes that are red. We have one that's at 24% and one at 23%. Now 24%, it coincides with the S&P 500 consumer staple sector. And then the one down here on the bottom, it coincides with the S&P 500 utilities sector. So those are the two sectors that have the lowest percentage of companies trading above their 200 moving average. Well, that sounds pretty interesting to me because if they're trading below their 200 moving average. That means there's the potential for them to bounce back at some point, thus enabling me to buy them at a discount right now. Now remember with us investing, say $100,000 right now, we're looking to invest for the long term. We're not looking for some day trade, we're looking for a company that's beaten down that it might take a little while for the company to come back we're looking for something that has the potential to enable us to buy at a discount now with the possibility of it appreciating over the next coming year or so. As a note, let's just say you're trying to invest in hot sectors. We could also use the same chart no matter what year you're looking at this chart in because it also shows you which ones are trading above the 200 moving average. Now this is 2023, but notice that the sector, the S&P 500 energy sector has 70% of the companies that are trading above their 200 moving average. And the same is true with the industrial sector. As you see on the right, 70% of the companies in the industrial sector are trading above their 200 moving average. So if you're looking for a hot sector to maybe do a quick in and out trade in, well, these are ones you might want to consider. Although I will invest in hot sectors, I tend to like sectors or companies that are beaten down. because I feel like that gives me the best opportunity to buy a good company at a discount. Now that we know we have two sectors that are kind of beaten down right now, consumer staples and utilities, now we can focus in on companies in those sectors. Let's just go with the one that's beaten down the most, which is utilities. Only 23% of the companies in the utility sectors are trading above their 200 moving average. That sounds like an opportunity to me. So at this point, if you have some companies you like in the utility sectors like we do, you can just look to trade in those companies. However, let's say that you don't have any companies that you like in that sector, or let's say you wanna maybe get some fresh new ideas of companies that you might potentially trade in. What could you do next? How could you find those companies? Well, you can use a tool that I like to use sometimes to find potential trading and investing opportunities. And that tool is Seeking Alpha. Now, if you like what you see as I go through this scenario using Seeking Alpha, I'll leave a link down in the description below that will give you a discount for a full year membership on Seeking Alpha. So here we're on the main home screen. Now, what you would do is click Stock Scanner over on the far left. There's lots of things you can choose from when you pick Stock Scanner, but I like to pick top rated stocks. So we chose top rated stocks. Now we want to filter those top rated stocks and focus on the utility sector. To do that, we're going to click advanced filters. Then we're going to click sector and industry. We'll hit done. Now we're going to edit those filters so we can select only the utility sector. So we'll hit our drop down menu here and scroll down to the utility sector. And as you see here, it only gave us three search results. So we want to broaden our horizons a little bit. We won't be quite as strict on our screening criteria. So we'll go through and adjust our ratings and our quant factor grades. So I adjusted all of our ratings 
and quant factor grades, things like earnings per share, profitability, momentum, and I rated them all a C minus. I just don't want to drift off into companies that really aren't that solid. Once we did that, as you can see here, we got 17 companies that we can look at. I'll scroll down here and here you see the list of the companies. So what you would do then is look at these companies, see if any of them are familiar to you or if they're ones that you would feel comfortable trading in. Now it just so happens that five of these companies listed out of these 17 are ones that I've already done my research on and I'm already actively tracking them. They include AEP, PPL, EIX, XCL, and WEC. Those are all utility companies that I am very familiar with I've already researched them to know that I feel comfortable trading in them and they're ones that I would then focus my efforts on trying to look for potential trades in them. But if you weren't familiar with any of these companies, then this is where you'd narrow your search down. You want to do research on these companies to make sure the companies that are solid and strong have a nice history of being well run and not overloaded with debt and have the potential to increase back in price once the sector rebounds. Once you've decided which companies you want to trade in or invest in, then it's time to decide how aggressive you will be. We can go ahead and buy them at the current market price or will you set a limit price, try and buy them below where they're currently trading at, or will you do, I'm gonna share with you at the end of this video, which is try to buy them at a low, low price. Here you see the alert I sent out to my patrons this past weekend, which share with them all the stocks I currently have limit prices set to try and buy them at a discount. This is my 10% outright stock ownership account. It's the account where I buy stocks outright with the plan to hold them forever. I'll share one of these limit orders with you to help you see my thinking when I'm placing these limit orders. The third stock from the top here is CCI. It's a REIT or real estate investment trust company that's pretty beaten down, but it's starting to show some strength. It looks like it might want a rebound. So I have a limit order sitting out there to try and buy it at $96 per share. As you can see here today, which is Monday, it gapped up and it's now trading for right around $108 per share. So in order for my limit order to get filled, it'll have to drop about 10% from where it's at now. But I did notice it's made several gaps and stocks tend to like to fill gaps. So I believe there's a possibility that it could get filled sometime in the next month or two. But with this limit order, I might not get filled. I might totally miss this opportunity to buy some additional shares of CCI. So just keep in mind that with limit orders, the more aggressive you are trying to place those limit orders farther and farther below the stock's current price, the less likely it is that you will get filled on that order. So if you wanna get filled quicker, you might wanna place your limit orders closer to where the stock is currently trading at. But with CCI, I'd be very happy to buy it at a 10% discount from where it's trading at right now if that order were to get filled. But what if you want a better deal? What if you want to buy at low, low prices? How could you do that? You might consider selling cash secure put options in stocks at strike prices that you'd be happy to buy those stocks at. That enables you to get paid while you wait for the opportunity to potentially buy these stocks at a very low price. Here is one potential stock that I'm considering doing a trade in right now. It's UGI. Notice that going back over the past couple of years, UGI has dropped in price by over 50%. But it now appears that over the past month and a half, it might be trying to form a bottom. Now, has it happened before? What well, did? Going back here about a year and a half ago, it like it was trying to form a bottom. It did advance. And it came back and made a new lower low. So this is not a guarantee, but technical analysis tells me that we might be trying to form a bottom and at least have some sort of temporary bounce, which a temporary bounce is not that important to me when I'm looking at the companies I want to trade in the long term. It is more important when I'm trading in short term options. But this video is about investing for the long term. So with UGI looking very weak over the past couple of years, I think it might be an opportunity to start accumulating some shares of UGI in my long-term hold account. It's currently trading at $21.86 per share. Let's say I wanted to get a really good deal. Let's say on top of the over 50% drop this experience for the past couple of years, I wanted to get it even cheaper. Let's say I wanted to try and buy it at $17.50 per share. That would mean that I'm trying to buy it at a $4.36 per share discount where it's trading at right now. That equates to an additional 20% discount. So how can I get paid to try and do that potential trade? Here's how. We can look to sell a cash secure put option in UGI at that $17.50 per share strike price. That option is currently trading for around $1.10 per share to $1.20 per share. So if we go in the middle, we'll say we should get about $1.15 per share for selling this cash secure put option. Now this expiration day is September 20th or 24. That's about 298 days away, so a little less than a year. But we're trying to buy the stock at an additional 20% discount, and we're getting paid $1.15 per share to give someone the right to sell us that stock 
at that 20% discount from where it's trading at right now. Would I be happy with that price? Well, it's a little low for what I like to try and get when I sell cash share put options, but if I like the company, I didn't mind tying up some capital, maybe setting it aside to try and buy it at that big discount, then I wouldn't mind getting $1.15 per share to wait the next 300 days to see if I could buy it at an additional discount. I want to give you a word of caution here though when it comes to selling cash share put options. If you're new to option trading, please make sure to learn everything you possibly can about options before you trade in them. And if you're brand new to option trading, then I'll leave a link to a video above. In the description below, it's a beginner's video that'll tell you all the basics about option trading. Once you're done with that video, it'll give you a link to some additional information that you can access to help you learn how we go about trading options, including cash care put options in companies I'd love to own at big discounts. Trading in options can be a great tool to have, but like many tools, it's very important to know how to use it properly. If used improperly, it can really financially hurt you. But if you know how to use it, it's a tool that the most wealthy investors use in investing and trading right now. The second tip is to always keep in mind that stocks, they can always go lower than you think they should or higher than you think that they should. Technical analysis is a valuable tool that's made me millions of dollars over the years, but it isn't perfect. It doesn't work 100% of the time. Just keep in the back of your mind that a stock can always go lower than you think it should, and it can always go higher than you think it should. There's a saying I like to remind myself of, which goes, markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. And that's if you're using my third word of caution, which is if you're using margin or leverage. I don't encourage anyone to use margin or leverage, but if you are going to use it, please make sure you understand how it works, including what will happen to your margin or leverage when the stock market goes against you. For example, look what happened to your portfolio if another March of 2020 happened. Margin and leverage is one of those tools that if used properly, it can really help you amplify your returns. But if used improperly, it can put you right out of the business. If you'd like to get an alert whenever we buy stocks or sell options, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see the fastest way possible I know to live off dividends, check out the video at the link above and the description below entitled, The Fastest Way to Live Off Dividends. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.